Hey everybody, welcome to On the Glide Slope. I've received some requests uh, to give a tour of the sim, so I'm happy to do that. I'll just give sort of a top to bottom tour and then um, hopefully it'll answer some of the questions that I've gotten. Um, the uh, We're in the Cessna 182 from A2A here at Grand Canyon Airport in Orbix scenery. Um, from top to bottom up here in the scenery and the ceiling, I have the SciTech uh, information panel running. Um, and a single flight information panel from SciTech that's running one of Tom Tsui's great gauges for uh, a wet compass in this case. Um, these are uh, sun visors that I found on eBay from a Cessna 172, as well as some air vents from a real Cessna that I found on eBay that I was able to mount um, into the side with a little side panel. Um, some simple puck lighting, just LED puck lighting that sticks to the, sticks to the top. I'm working down to the panel. Uh, the glare shield is made out of leatherette and um, just one inch foam, which I trimmed and mounted and spray mounted uh, the leatherette to the foam so that it looks like a decent glare shield. And I have a brace back here, which you'll see in a second, so I can actually rest things on it, um, like the notepad, and it doesn't, doesn't break or anything like that. Um, the panel itself is made out of um, quarter inch MDF. Um, you can see there. And I found a panel, uh, a PDF of a 172 panel online, which uh, this cabin is 46 inches across. It's meant to be the same size as a Cessna 172 cabin, but I couldn't find a 172 panel schematic. But I found one for a, one, or a 182 panel schematic, but I found one for a 172, printed it out and just cut it down the middle and extended it a few inches on each side, traced it, and then used a jigsaw to cut out the uh, spaces for the avionics. Um, some stickers I found uh, on eBay for 172 um, panel announcements. Stickers, I've just put them in reasonable places. Um, some FIPs running different gauges. I found a little Cessna um, panel metal that I mounted there on eBay. This is just an iPad running the six pack. In this case, it's running Air Manager's app, which uh, connects with Prepared. Um, it also can run RF Cockpit, which I think looks beautiful, but tends to throw errors for me with Prepared version 3.3. And then I also can run the G1000, which also will connect with the sim if I wanted to run that. But I usually run Air Manager because in the airplane that I train in, in real life, uh, I run a six pack that looks kind of like this. Um, this is a Lilliput touchscreen display, which I use for the um, GPS unit as well as weather. I'll show you that in a second. Another FIP for the RPM in this case. This is just a little six inch keyboard, which Velcros to the panel. SciTech uh, radio panel and multi-panel, and two more FIPs. Um, throttle quadrant, um, TPM quadrant actually from SciTech, and then the trim wheel and SciTech throttle quadrant with two Cessna rudder pedals and two Cessna yokes from SciTech. This is a uh, iPad mount for a real yoke, which I found on Amazon, which I use when I run the iPad here with ForeFlight. SciTech switch panel down below. Some puck lighting, just LED puck lighting there to give me some light. And then I also, underneath the glare shield, have LED strip lights. And then down here, here are two remotes where if I want to run red, I can run red just by hitting the button. Or strange colors, if my kids want to run strange colors, we can run purple and green, um, but we'll just run white. Uh, two rugged um, aviation headsets. Um, not the most expensive in the world, but just fine. I use this one for my real world flight training. Uh, this is a great unit. Uh, you know, you can use an actual uh, aviation um, intercom unit for maybe $100 or less um, in a sim, but the problem is it, I wanted something that the PC will see as a separate sound card. So this is a USB connected FSX dual unit. Works great. Both headsets are plugged into it allows us to hear what's happening in the sim. The microphones work when I'm talking to Pilot Edge, and even better, the intercom between the two headsets works. So when me and anybody who is in here with me talk to each other, we hear each other through the headset in real time with no delay, um, which works great. Okay, I had to sh take a short break there. Uh, apologies for that. Um, but if I f start the airplane, try to start it with one, one hand here. Um, the avionics come alive, um, but uh, also you can see the touchscreen comes alive and it's running the 
Flight One GTN 750 software, and with the touchscreen, it works really great. So I can go to the map. I can uh, do everything that it would do because it's running the GTN simulation. I can build a flight plan with it, add a waypoint, uh, KSLC. And I can go to this and load a procedure, an arrival procedure for Delta 3, BCE transition, load it and it will load all that in for me. Uh, so it uh, works really great and um, I like it a lot. I don't always uh, fly with it because I want to learn how to fly with other kind of um, dead reckoning and VOR navigation, but that, that's the touch screen in use. Um, over on the side, uh, door handle I found on eBay from uh, Cessna, a door assistant um, handle from a Cessna. These are 32 inch LC or LED displays, um, cheap and light. And I put a little trim around the edge so it looks like windows. And uh, that's pretty much the interior of the airplane. Some little side pockets that I mounted to carry uh, procedures and stuff in, and that's pretty much it. So again, it's 46 inches wide. It's supposed to be like the real thing um, for a, a 172, but it's a few inches taller because I just didn't see the need to be so cramped in here. And then the chairs are just office chairs that don't have um, side arms um, so that they can fit and some carpeting on the bottom from a remnant carpet place. Um, this is like a fake leatherette with some padding underneath it that I mounted to be on the bottom part of the side walls. And then this is a muslin to cover the plastic sideboard that I used. So it looks a little nicer in here and on the ceiling. Um, if I back up to show you the whole thing and turn on the lights, um, you can get a better view of the whole sim. So, you can see it's modeled on flight simulators or on flight sim liberty sim. It's basically a big box. This is uh, two by two, which is actually one and a half by one and a half lumber that it's made out of with a simple cardboard or it's a, a plastic uh, corrugated plastic, a um, little less than a quarter of an inch, pretty easy to cut, which the side panels are made out of. Um, you can see that I've got it paneled on the side. The TVs just sit in here. Um, they sit on some wooden studs in there. Um, and then up top I've got an access panel mounted so I can get to the compass or the BPN wiring if I need. Um, if we come around to the other side, there's the PC that runs it all, which is a power spec PC, pretty loaded. Um, a 100 inch monitor or a screen projection screen and then that's an ultra short throw projector up there as you can see it's probably two feet away from the screen it doesn't project all the way to the top it projects down past the bottom of the screen on the bottom but I would I like it that way because for me it gives me the best full field of view um, and uh, as you can see from the inside of the sim it looks good and quite immersive like that the um, back of the panel is, you know, a mess <laughs> of uh, USB hubs uh, and the SciTech gear, two speakers, um, but you can get kind of a sense of what it's like. And then again, the glare shield is just made out of one inch foam. And there's the brace I talked about so that I can put things on the glare shield and it doesn't, doesn't flop around. Um, subwoofer back here, lots of paneling or, or cabling in terms of all the USB stuff um, and lots of USB hubs because you need to have enough power loading for everything to work in the world of SciTech. So that's basically the unit um, and uh, I hope you uh, liked watching, I hope the tour was helpful, I sure have fun flying it and uh, it's taken a long time to kind of get it figured out and get it right. but. Uh, it's a blast. And uh, again, if you have questions, you can just leave them in the comments or go to onthegliedslope.net and email me a question, and I'd be happy to answer them for you. So thanks again for watching.